Hey, welcome. So you got some relationship fears. Who doesn't? Have you ever thought about what that one relationship fear actually is for you and what it's doing to you and how it's even internally crippling you, keeping you stuck, keeping your relationship stuck? Well, guess what? I did a survey not too long ago and it kept coming back to this one thing. One thing that most women who are married or in long-term relationships keep thinking about. I'm going to share it with you shortly. But who am I? I'm Marshawn Olanio, your favorite life and relationship strategist. And I help women who are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling unloved and disconnected and shift them to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. Now, let's get into the top secret, the top relationship fear. The top relationship fear is actually failure or for the relationship to end. And that puzzles me a lot because I find it time and time again that so many people have this fear, yet they do not do what it takes in order to keep the relationship, in order for the relationship not to fail. So if I am, me, thinking my biggest fear is for this relationship, and in my particular case, my marriage to end, why would I not do everything in my power, me, control, the stuff that I can control, in my power for it not to end? Why would I allow the fear of me being vulnerable stop me from speaking up, stop me from walking across the room and giving my husband a hug, stop me from saying, you know what? I don't care how many times I need to apologize. First, going over there, starting the conversation with, I'm sorry, here's why I felt the way that I felt and being able to bring that connection back together instead of allowing the distance to continue on. Why would I not try everything in my power to keep things going? If failure is what could cripple me the most, if the relationship ending, the marriage ending, a divorce happening could occur, why would I continue to be so stubborn? Why would I continue to not get help? Why would I continue to do all the things that I know are keeping me stuck, that are keeping the distance there, that are keeping us from not becoming one? There are so many of us out there that this is our biggest fear. And yet we allow this fear to cripple us from doing the very things that we know that we need to do. Is the thing that you need to do next, get help, reach outside of your circle, outside of your marriage and say, you know what? This is what's happening. This is what's going on. How do I fix this? Or are you so stubborn to allow your marriage or your relationship just to fall by the wayside because your spouse won't do it with you? or because you're allowing other things to get in the way. Maybe it's your career. Maybe it's your friends. Maybe it's your family. Maybe you're just too scared to allow yourself to be vulnerable, to show your emotion. But that is the very thing that's keeping you exactly where you're at. The way to increase the chances of your relationship or marriage not failing is for you to do the hard thing you're struggling with that conversation go have the conversation you're struggling with saying I'm sorry go say I'm sorry you're struggling with just putting yourself out there because of you you don't know how they're gonna take it you don't know if they're gonna make fun of you you don't know you just don't know the unknown is what's crippling you yeah, go do that thing. Go and say it. Go and be you. Go and be free. Get this stuff up off your chest. Because again, if it is me who is fearing my marriage, failing, a divorce occurring, 
why would I stop doing the very thing that could get me over the hump? Is it scary sometimes? Yes, it is. Because I'm putting myself out there. I'm being vulnerable. I'm, I'm showcasing all of my emotions and my feelings. And maybe I'm going to cry today. But guess what? Who cares? Who cares? Because the very person that you chose, in my case, my husband, should be the person that sees my vulnerability. Should be the person that understands me the most should be the person that gets to see all of my ugly as well as all of my beauty. So if he is the man that I am lying in the bed next to, why would I be so scared to show up and fully be me? Why would I be so scared to ask for the things that I need? Why would I be so scared to say, you know what? You hurt my feelings. I don't like it. That thing that you did, insert whatever that thing is, Please don't do that anymore because it makes me feel like this. I don't like feeling this way. And I especially don't like feeling this way when it's coming from you, the person that I respect, the person that I love, the person that I'm building a life together with. Have you decided not to make failure, divorce, a breakup an option? Many people, <laughs> let me back up. I created a video not too long ago about I ain't signing no prenup. And I know that's not proper grammar, but that's the title. I ain't signing no prenup. And I got so many comments on there about what well, I'm a gold digger. That's why I'm not getting married. All of them, not to throw any of you lovely men under the bus, but all of them came from men. It's not a big deal for me because divorce is not an option. If I was getting abused, okay, divorce would be an option. To me, my, my big thing is cheating. So if I'm getting cheated on, divorce is an option. But by and large, in my household, divorce is not an option. So when we have divorce on the table, when we have breakup on the table, when we are signing prenups, this is my opinion, when we're signing prenups, you are putting divorce as an option on the table. So I ain't signing no prenup because divorce is not an option in my household. It doesn't make me a gold digger. It makes me say that divorce is not an option. Somebody even called me a bitch on there. It's not because I'm a bitch. Divorce is not an option in my household. It's not because I want your money. Divorce is not an option in my household. Just like you putting up with my stuff, I'm putting up with yours. Divorce is not an option. And because it's not an option, I'm making sure that everything that I have control over, I am doing. Reading the books, talking to the coaches, talking to the counselors, right? looking for other courses because somebody knows some more stuff than I do. Speaking to, to, to couples and elders that I respect that are already at a higher level in their marriage because if you don't remember, this is the second year for me, but it's also my second marriage. So I don't want it to end in divorce. I want to do everything that I can in my power to make sure this one works out for the long haul. This is why I'm here. So you do not have to become a part of the statistic like I was. So you can actually get the tools, the strategies, and the information and implement it into your own marriage, into your own relationship so there's no breakdown. So you can have a better understanding of where you went wrong or keep going wrong and you can fix that. Because all the information that you need is either in somebody else's head, i.e. mine, coach, counselor, therapist, in a book, in an online course, or in a seminar or conference. It is out there. The information is out there if you want it. Now, if you want to change around your relationship, if you actually want to do what it takes, because it's going to take some work, but if you want to do and you actually have the passion and to say, you know what? Divorce is not an option. Breakup is not an option. 
I'm not getting abused. I'm not like go through your deal breakers list. If your deal breakers are not being broken, if they're not showing up in your relationship, then you should find a way to allow this relationship to work out. Again, everything in your power because you could put put everything that you can into this relationship, into this marriage, and your partner still could come to you one day and say, I do not want to be a part of this with you any longer. You don't have control over that. And that is something that I had to deal with myself because I felt like in my first marriage, I actually did everything that I could do. And I still got that same line from my ex-husband. He no longer wanted the marriage with me. And I had to deal with that. I had no control over that. Now, yes, I could have sat there. Yes, I could have never signed the, um, the divorce papers and all that. But why would I do that to myself? Why would I hold on to somebody who does not want to be held on to? Why would I force myself to stay there when he clearly, plain as day, said he don't want it? And at least he didn't want it with me. So I'm asking you, are you ready to not fail? Are you ready to deal with everything that is showing up ugly in your marriage? in your relationship and switch it and change it all around if you are ready if you're serious about doing the work and moving your relationship to the next level again it is going to take some work but if you are ready to move to the next level then make your appointment go to my website www.marshano.com sign up make your appointment and let's get this thing fixed Let's start working on this thing so you too can have a happier marriage or a happier relationship. Again, I am Marshawn Olanio, your favorite life and relationship strategist, and I help women that are married or in long-term relationships stop feeling unloved and disconnected and shift them to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated. I love you guys. If you made it this far, give me thumbs up on or give me a like, and of course, subscribe. Bye now.